so yeah, I guess this is my first video. Uh, welcome at the office. So I am an amateur physicist. It began with thinking about physics and it ended up trying to figure out everything as much as possible about physics. I'm trying to build my own theory of everything, I guess, in which I'm trying to translate all the laws of physics, I guess, into one superfluid ether. For, well, I'm still working on it. It's, 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 it's not even close to finish, but that's mainly because I'm kind of stuck in my work. Yeah, let's just show you around. What I was doing today was working on vortex uh, motion, especially vortex motion um, in a ring, vortex ring, in which I'm trying to figure out if there is a relation between the pressure, the temperature and the volume of substance, for instance water or gas or whatever, and if there is some way a connection between the velocities on the core of the vortex and the velocity in the center or the velocity of translation of the entire ring. And this is the Schrodinger equation, one of his famous equations, and I'm trying to uh, yeah, translate it in a way that we all understand. Electrons with mass. So yeah, they're talking about electrons, particles being waves, waves being particles. I think that the electron, yeah, uh, it's just one kind of vortex, because you can have a lot of different vortices and the basic one is the vortex ring, so I think that being the most fundamental particle in... in, in uh, well, it's not divisible anymore, so the electron is yeah, a fundamental particle uh, together with uh, the photon and I think that they're both vortex rings, but I can be wrong, I don't know for sure and I think that the interaction between an electron and a photon is actually yeah, I, I, they call it collapsing of the wave function, but uh, I rather call it vortex capture, I guess, where you have two uh, rings linked together. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, yeah, here's a cool idea. So I first thought that the atom would look something like this. And as you can see, it has different radii for the electron and that would be the positive charged nucleus, I guess. These are radii of circles, whatever. So, uh, that will be a vector equilibrium or whatever you call it. It's about the vectors of the waves, I guess. But yeah, pretty basic quantum mechanics, I guess. A little bit. It's not really quantum mechanics because I, I really don't understand anything about quantum mechanics, but somehow I do understand it. Well, eventually I tried finding new information about new stuff, and the only thing that helped me was digging through history. So, yeah, I guess because quantum mechanics starts with this paper, I guess, on the laws of energy distribution in the normal spectrum from Max Planck. So, I guess I started here. So, here you got the famous Planck equation where the energy is a constant times the frequency. And you have Einstein's work, I guess he, he, he built on top of it. So, I like to read original papers. I don't like I don't like to read what people say that, for instance, Einstein said. No, I want to know for sure what he said. Like, I want to read his words. And I like the translations because it's easier, but I also have the German versions, just to make sure that they're not lying. I have a couple of theories of Maxwell. This is his most famous one. Everybody knows this one. The dynamical theory of electromagnetic field. And as you can see, it's a whole lot of, well, <coughs> mathematics. I'm an internet generation kid, so that meant that 
I eventually found Nikola Tesla, who wasn't talking anything in, in, about an electromagnetic field, who was talking about ether. So, Maxwell, as you can see, writes in his dynamical theory of the electromagnetic field, he talks about an ethereal substance, as you can see. Okay, well, you get the drift. Uh, so yeah, my idea now. It's not my idea, I guess, but somehow I figured out that there was this one famous physicist. His name was William Thompson. Most people don't know William Thompson by the name William Thompson, but they all know him by the name of Lord Kelvin. And Lord Kelvin was, for me, the first one who actually wrote something about, I guess, vortex atoms. In combination with Maxwell, because Maxwell has, has, his, has his theory of molecular vortices applied to the magna magnetic phenomena. So Kelvin talks about rotational and irrotational vortices, and he talks about how the vortices can wobble in a way. And this reminds me a lot of quantum mechanics and the wave function for the electron. So it's no evidence, but it's just a guess. He, he starts off with the simple ring, a ring in ring. I guess this could be an electron and a photon combined, so the collision of the two. And this is the most ingenious part of Kelvin, because he theorized that, that the, the incompressible ether a non-vicious, incompressible, superfluid ether, or however you want to call it, but the perfect fluid, that it will be capable of holding stable vortex knots. This is a trefoil knot. It is the first knot possible in knot theory. Check out the mechanical theory of heat by Clausius, which I, well, almost entirely downloaded <coughs> and printed. The thing I really like about his paper is it has 374 papers. It's, that's insane. And he ends with such an awesome equation. Pi equals the pressure divided by temperature. That's so cool. So yeah, the laws of thermodynamics. I guess.